Valve announced the Steam Deck this week, completely torpedoing Nintendo's new OLED Switch variant by providing some much needed competition in the handheld space. The hardware specs look great, and will certainly spur Nintendo to up their hardware game in turn, meaning we as consumers will benefit greatly from the coming arms race between these two titans. Adding a nice new screen now just isn't going to cut it, and to paraphrase a great quote I saw on Reddit, Steam does what Nintendo don't. That's not to say that the Steam Deck will be flawless. In fact, I'd like to remind people that while Valve can be extremely innovative, they often fail to stick the landing. Remember the Steam Controller? Originally hailed as being an innovative evolution to the classic gamepad with improved mouse-like accuracy, I could never find a configuration for it that worked any better by comparison, and never managed to play through a single game with it at all. Now it collects dust somewhere in my basement. Because of this, I'm cautious about how the controls on the Steam Deck will actually feel, as I hope Valve learned that their cool concepts don't always net out to good products in the end. Trackpads here are an evolution of the same technology that we've been working on uh, since the Steam Controller days. Another cautionary tale of failed innovation from Valve was the Steam Link, a device used to broadcast games from your PC to your TV. The primary and most obvious issue with this product was the latency over Wi-Fi. I remember going all out trying to reduce the lag as much as possible, buying things like Ethernet over copper solutions in an effort to create a wire connection from my upstairs office to my downstairs living room where the Steam Link was connected to my TV. Nothing worked as well as simply moving my PC downstairs and hooking it directly to my TV, meaning the Steam Link was effectively useless for anyone attempting to stream via Wi-Fi, which was everyone. One final issue I have with the Steam Deck was who tested it out. The who being gaming journalists like the ads at IGN. I rolled my eyes when they said they tested it with Doom Eternal and the controls felt not far off from using a regular mouse. Both the thumbsticks and the trackpads are also capacitive, which means they can tell when your finger is on them. Combined with the internal gyro sensor, it gives you a weirdly precise level of control that, after a brief adjustment period, is honestly not far off from using a regular mouse. Yes, even in first-person shooters like Doom Eternal. Get the f*** out of here. There's no way in hell I'd use a Steam Deck to play FPS games in 720p with any kind of controller, let alone Doom Eternal. The entire point of PC gaming is to have 10,000 times the computing power that put a man on the moon used instead to saturate your eyeballs in glorious fidelity and pinpoint accuracy as you headshot every enemy in the game at 120 frames a second. Personally, I'd use the Steam Deck more for third-person games like the Arkham series or Souls-like games, or retro-styled indie games like Valheim or Blasphemous, hack-and-slash-style games where pinpoint accuracy isn't a primary part of the gameplay. The question is then, does $400 justify the ability to play those types of games from your couch or elsewhere? I'm leaning towards yes with cautious optimism, but I highly advise waiting for actual feedback from real gamers before pulling the trigger on this one. In my opinion, it comes down to how the controls feel for the Steam Deck above all else, as knowing Valve missed the mark with their Steam Controller gives me some cause for concern. What do you think of the Steam Deck? Do you think you'll be picking it up or not? Let me know down in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, click the like and subscribe buttons to feed it to the algorithm. And check out some of my other videos on my channel while you're here, as that'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks for watching. Have a good one!